back to talk about a little more electrocardiography. And in this segment, we're gonna talk about Hypo-K. Corey is waiting in the wings to talk about Hyper-K. We're gonna talk about over the next five minutes, a very, very simple EKG finding, which when you see it, it is enormously predictive of severe Hypo-K. Now, we're not talking about 3.3 or 3.4, we're talking about usually well under three, 2.5, 2.0, or even under 2.0. Uh, so this is severe hypo-K. Now the red arrows here are pointing at U waves. This is a no-brainer. This is on your boards. Nobody would miss this. You've got a very nice T wave followed by a pretty nice generous U wave. These are real U waves. When I see U waves that are as big as the T wave or even bigger than the T wave, to me that's a real U wave. All right? Not the tiny blips that people make a fuss about, but when the T wave is getting big, these are oftentimes referred to as camel humps. Marriott used to call these camel humps. The computer thinks this is just a big T wave, so it produces a prolonged QT. In reality, the purists would say it's not a prolonged QT, it's actually TU fusion. I say get a life, call it a prolonged QT, all right? So now think about this for just a moment before we move forward in the slides. As your potassium gets higher, T waves get big. Everyone knows that. As your potassium falls, this lecture, as your potassium falls, your T waves get smaller and smaller and the U wave grows. Eventually, the T wave goes flat, and you just have a big U wave producing what really looks like a prolonged QT. As the potassium falls even more, that T wave sinks even further, producing ST segment sagging and an inverted T wave, which then bounces up into a big upright U wave. And this is pre predominantly in the precordial leads, V2, V3, those are kind of your money leads. But when you see this pattern of the T wave going down and then catapulting north, that's a very predictive finding that tells you that you're looking at severe hypokalemia. Sometimes people call this a reverse Wellens wave. It's like the opposite of the Wellens wave, which predicts proximal LED. Don't make the mistake of calling this a, a Wellens wave. I refer to this as the Nikelicam T wave, and I'll tell you why in just a second for those that don't know. So again, severe hypo-K is what we're talking about. Here's an even better case, take a look. You've got an inverted T wave, and this is the U wave. So you've got this reverse Wellens or the biphasic type of T wave. Now, just to review, this is a Wellens wave. Notice that Wellens biphasic T waves go up and then down. The severe hypo-K patient goes down and then up. So don't confuse these. People often mistakenly call this Wellens. It's not Wellens. Wellens goes up and down. This goes down and then up. I refer to this as the Nikelicam T wave. And the reason I do is, you know, people started saying this is the reverse Wellens wave. And I said, you know what? Wellens already has his name on something. De Winter's got his name on a T wave. I want to name something also. I'm not going to name after myself though. That's kind of arrogant. But I thought, you know what? Um, my kids were standing next to me as I was looking through this and they said, it kind of looks like a roller coaster. The roller coaster T wave, that's hypokalemia. And I thought, you know what? I'm just, damn it, I'm gonna name it after my kids. So there's Nikhil on the left, Elena in the middle and Cameron on the right. So this is now referred to as the Nikelicam T wave. And if you Google search Nikelicam, we've made it. <laughs> you, you'll find it. So, so, so I call them the Nikelicam T waves. Anyway, so again, you're looking at an inverted T wave, that's the T wave, catapulting up above the baseline, that's the U wave. When you see this, it's enormously predictive of severe hypokalemia. You can look at this 12 lead ECG and V2, V3, you see this pattern, you snap your fingers and say it's hypokalemia. And an hour before the labs come back, you already know the diagnosis. Now, what I always tell people, don't tell your staff that you know about this, all right? What you should do is when you see this EKG, just you know, bring everybody into the room, listen to the patient's heart with your stethoscope and say, it's hypokalemia. And people will, people will like, wow, how did you know this? You, this is great for the interns. The residents are all into ultrasound. You know, show me how you diagnose hypo-K and ultrasound, right? You can't do it. So if you really want to play with their minds, take the ultrasound probe and look at the heart and say, it's hypo-K, right? So, <laughs> By second or third year, they kind of, they've learned about this, so I can't play with them. But the interns, I, I can get them. So again, take a look at V2 and V3. There's your Nikelicam T wave, goes down and then up. Very predictive of severe hypokalemia. Another example, in this case, is primarily just V3. The computer's gonna read this as a prolonged QT. It's actually inverted T fused to a U wave. 
I still consider it in my differential for prolonged QT because these patients are still at risk for ventricular arrhythmias. So I'm going to worry about this. There's another nice example. Take a look there at lead V2. And in V3, it just like, uh, looks like a really long QT interval. There's another one. This is profound. You look at this and you can, again, just an hour before the lab calls you back and says it's hemolyzed probably, you're going to know that this patient has severe hypo -K. And if you want, you can start treating. Usually, we'll at least start the magnesium on these patients. And there's another nice example. So it's a very, very predictive pattern which can tell you long before the lab calls that your patient's got severe hypokalemia. And yet another example, V2 and V3 are your money leads. Don't uh, confuse this with ischemia or Wellens. This is the opposite of the Wellens. So again, when you see this T wave that goes down and then catapults north, the big U wave, that is hypokalemia. And again, it's a very nice and predictive pattern. All right, let's hear about hyperkalemia. Thanks. Thanks.